Hey there, No Fluff team. Welcome to another edition, another night edition of No Fluff Salesforce, where we're going to teach you how to get an app, get your app on the Salesforce App Exchange. Now, I know you guys are itching to really build that product, and I promise that. Um, I, the truth is I'm still in development, and I, this is the hardest part of the, the whole process is building the app just the right way. Um, there's a lot of security implications and other things that need to be taken into account. And so, you know, we're going to have to wait off on that. I'm working on it. But until then, today we're going to answer the question, how do you come up with an idea for your app? This is a very critical part. You know, before you start building, you really need that idea. How do you know what to build? Uh, it's nice that you can kind of build along with me, but really this is my idea. You know, you're you're going to want to come up with your own idea, something you can really get behind. How do you do that? Um, my solution, I, I have one way of coming up with apps. And um, I've done that to come up with Product Love, the app that we're building in this course. Um, it, I've done it with Data Generator, another app I've built that you know it creates mock data, fake data in your org for testing or for um, demoing purposes. And my solution really works every time for me. I know other people have different ways, but this really works for me. You know, what doesn't work for me, a lot of people say, I'll do research. Um, honestly, ideas never really come for me when I do research, when I'm actively thinking, I'm gonna come up with an app idea. They really hit me in my everyday work. and. That is because in my everyday work, I run into problems um, or I see things how they could be better and then I want to fix those problems. So my number one and only piece of advice for you when coming up with app ideas is fix your own problem. So with product love, you know, I work in tech, I work in product. I hear from the sales teams their, their stories of, of clients who would buy if only had they had that one feature. Well, one story isn't enough to get a whole product team to pivot what they're doing. So you kind of need aggregated data. You need how how many dollars, how many how much money is behind that product if that feature if we were to build it. Um, how many clients is this affecting? How many of them are already paying us? There's a lot of questions that go that will help. Um, prioritize certain features and that's what product love aims to do to make that easier data generator was a problem i faced building salesforce apps there is no great um solution to getting mock data a lot of the articles i read online said to go to a, a website like mockaroo and you know make uh, a, a csv of data for each object that I needed and then upload that to Salesforce and I just thought that was ridiculous especially because I came to understand how rich the the Salesforce coding environment is so I was solving my own problem there so the reason why fixing your own problem really works is for three reasons and here are the three problems that people with app ideas have is number one, you come, you think you have this great app idea and you might launch it and everything and then realize no one actually wants to buy it. Um, that's a problem with market. You know, there's no market for your app. There's no people who want to buy it. Um, but if you solve your own problem, you already have a market of one, you, you know, you actually had this problem before you had the app idea. So, um, if you're solving that problem, odds are someone else has that same problem that you have. Um, problem number two is familiarity. A lot of people get into apps and they're not actually familiar with the problem they're trying to solve. You know, I'm something I'm not familiar with might be like, I don't know, Snapchat. If I wanted to make, I'm not into Snapchat. If you wanted to make a Snapchat integration into Salesforce, you wouldn't want to call on me. I, I just don't know that. There's There's not a lot of, there's a huge learning curve for me to do that, and I just wouldn't be invested in it because it's it's not my problem again. Um, and that brings me to the third point is interest. Like if, if you solve your own problem, you have heavy interest in actually seeing that solved, seeing that get released because that solves your problem. It'll help your friends. It'll help other people you know with those same problems. So 
Um, I see a lot of people die, you know, their ideas die out. They can't finish it. They can't launch it because they just don't have that interest at the end of the day. It doesn't actually solve their problem. So if you follow my one rule, solve your own problem, you will come up with some of the best app ideas. Now, the problems, or I should say the ideas don't just come to you all at once. You really have to think about your problems and you know, think, can I fix this? And would is this something I'd be willing to pay to have fixed? So just in your everyday work, I challenge you to look for those moments when you when you are experiencing some difficulties with something that you think this is ridiculous. It shouldn't be this way. And if you do that, I I think you have a better chance of success than just thinking what could I possibly be, you know, trying to brainstorm or, or do research. So yeah, <laughs> that is my advice for you. Take it or leave it. And next week, expect something in the build phase. I'm really excited to get this built with you guys. And I hope you'll join me next week. Please like this video if it helped you. And please subscribe to the channel. Thanks again.